Hello friends, Kaji is here with you and today we will have a solid roast of the Kawasaki Z750. So I suggest the owners or people who really like this moped either immediately close this review pros and cons or I don't know somehow put out the fire maybe. Let's start as usual with the history. The Kawasaki Z750 motorcycle was produced from 2004 to 2013. It had one rest style in 2007. The Z750 engines are indeed the Z1000 engines, which are derated and reduced in volume, producing 106 horsepower and 78 NC. In addition to engine detuning, the motorcycle also got a stiffer suspension. There were in fact three versions, which are the regular S version and R version. They mainly differed only in appearance, and we will not particularly touch on this. The only thing I want to note is that the rest style was once in 2007, of course. I would have liked to start with the pros, but due to my subjective opinion of this motorcycle, we will probably start with the cons and end with the pros. Like this motorcycle, we weren't too disappointed with it. Let's start maybe with the cons. As I said, the first downside is its weight. The motorcycle weighs 203 kilograms and 207 with ABS, which is quite a lot. Its competitors are much lighter, like the same Hornet or Phaser. The second downside is economizing on everything. The motorcycle was built with economy in mind, so it would be budget friendly enough, let's put it that way, to compete with its peers, even in the price segment. So the metal is weak there, the swing arm looks like a piece of channel, also made of weak steel, pretty hard and uncomfortable saddle. An air filter that attracts sand collects all kinds of dust, but nothing to be surprised about. This is quite a standard strategy for Kawasaki, they also did the same with Sur 6. So economizing on components based on materials is in principle normal for the Kawasaki Corporation. The third downside is the brakes. The brakes are really weak to be honest, only two pistons, caliper, that's honestly not much. Yes of course with the ABS version we have four pistons. But damn, it still seems to me that two piston calipers are very little for the front brake, especially for a naked bike which generates a substantial 106 horsepower. That's plenty, even a lot, not too much. The fourth downside is the suspension. The bike received a reasonably cheap suspension, which wasn't even adjustable until 2007. In general, according to owner reviews, the suspension is very soft and it's quite easy to bottom out on it. To make it stiffer, you most likely need to dig deeper. The fifth negative is a rather weak stock chain. The stock Z750 has a 520 chain, although based on the power characteristics, it should have had a 525. It stretches very quickly, basically it's replaced immediately because 520 is truly a very weak chain for a significant amount of horsepower and no less than substantial newton meters, so to speak. The sixth disadvantage inherited from the Z100 engine is the lack of low end. Of course, it is impossible to say that there are few lower classes, or rather that they are absent, but that there are few, this can be said. That is, it does not ride at the level of the Hornet, it is a higher revving, uh, let's say engine than the Hornet, but it is naturally more powerful. These were the six menaces of the Kwasaki Z750. Now let's move on, probably, to the pros in order to at least somehow smooth out the impression of what advantages the Kawasaki set 750 has. Well, of course, of course, first of all, this is the design. Yes, 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 no matter how negative I am. I treated this motorcycle. Its design still captivates people. That is, it is quite aggressive. It is very modern. It looks like a street fighter and it captivates. Let's be frank and honest. The second plus is the price. Yes, it is cheaper, even on the secondary market. More so, it's a thrill. You can show off to girls that you have more than 100 horsepower. In general, let's draw a small conclusion. I don't want to strongly criticize this motorcycle because it doesn't actually have any strong negatives in reliability or some pains like, for example, the Hano has... It's how you turn it with a thunder, the tension rattle, to be precise. But still, I have a subjective position on this motorcycle. I, I really don't like it. I really like the Z100, but it's a totally different bike, a totally different feeling. To me, the Z750 is simply a dummy, but a very beautifully drawn one. Its design is insanely beautiful, although it's essentially a slimmed down Z. 
Nevertheless, the bike still looks really beautiful. It's very captivating. And unfortunately, there's nothing particularly revolutionary about it. That is, everything that's hinged is all very, very bad quality. It's not disgusting quality, but it breaks. But if you choose between classmates, as I said before, I would choose another motorcycle. But outwardly, it's super. It's space. The price is lower. And accordingly, there are a little more horses in it. It will be a quota for the dynamics. It's probably better than competitors. That's the way it is. I hope the owners didn't get too upset with the review of the pros and cons of the Z. I really don't like the bike, but I don't like it subjectively. If you take it objectively, then this is an ordinary classic naked, which is very similar to competitors in all technical characteristics, and which is not much inferior to them. In some ways, it even wins. Like and subscribe. Kagi was with you.